No sure. turning back out. Here we go. Nope. Hi, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. This is summer school, uh, so the behavior is uh, getting worse. Um, but I'm still Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive of Higher Things, and I, I get to hang out with Paige again today. Paige, how's it going? Um, pretty good. How's it going with you? It's summertime. Uh, we're gearing up for conferences. I'm every which way at once, and I'm so tired, but I'm caffeinated so we're gonna do this thing um it's uh it's, it's actually i guess right in line with the topic that we were going to talk about today um imperfect people uh because my life is a mess and i'm the one making the mess so um can anything good come out of this i mean yeah i'm kind of the same way it's been kind of messy over here too but hey we're working through it Right. And this is one of those places where um, I, I think we generally, at least I, I struggle. Um, my anxiety gets up when I look at all the places that I failed and, and then recognize that I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which seems like it goes against one of those Bible passages that a lot of people hang up on their wall or highlight in the book because it sounds awful inspiring. But I have tried to simply um, not screw up so many things. So it, it how do we deal with this, that, that, that God would want to have anything to do with us that anything good could come from us as as sinners and that we're supposed to conquer all of these things where do we start well i would start by saying like we kind of remind ourselves that the only perfect being was jesus like right. we we get so hung up on oh i forgot to pray today oh i didn't do this oh i didn't do that oh i should have done this and then we just kind of let that anxiety mount. And when we do that, we're not helping ourselves and we're not really helping others. So we just got to remind ourselves, like, I know I struggle with this. I'm a perfectionist beyond perfectionism. And um, I, I have to remind myself to take a deep breath and be like, okay, but Jesus. So, yeah. And actually starting with, but Jesus, that that's helpful. Um, and not in the way that we would sort of want to go to, uh, because I immediately go to, well, Jesus is perfect and that's great for him, but I'm still not. Um, but when we actually say, but Jesus, we remember that, that God almighty became man, that, that God actually puts himself in, in a lower place than able to do all the things. In fact, like sort of the, the point of, uh, the, the whole story is that God died for our sins, that, that Christ came to nothing, that he was overwhelmed to the point where he gave up his spirit. Um, it, it's, it's not simply a, a question of power, uh, but it's a question of mercy. I, and here we get to actually start to deal with the fact that there's just a whole bunch of sinners. So you said, but Jesus, I know he can do all these things, but more, what does he want for us? Not just from us, but what does he want for us? Ooh, um, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, I mean, obviously he wants the best for us. Like he didn't come to save us just to go, all right, now you're on your own. Like then peace out. We're not, not dealing with these humans anymore. I don't know what to do with them, but um, he came so that he is here for us always. And when we feel the, oh, I'm not perfect. Oh, I'm not doing this. Oh, I'm not doing that. But Jesus already did. And that's kind of the thought process that process that I know kind of helps me through because I get so stuck in the Jesus did that that's all right but I I'm not able to do that and where is that little disconnect that I feel like a lot of people struggle with between okay this is what Jesus did but I'm holding myself to this standard why are we holding ourselves to a higher standard than what Jesus has already given us Right. Even the, the, the same standard, like, let's be really honest here. Um, I am not Jesus Christ, God Almighty, and neither are you. Um, the, the reason that we put ourselves at that standard, it, it's, a, it's a small little word, well, a small little commandment. It's idolatry. It's the first commandment. We wish to be like God, mostly so we don't need him anymore. Um, it, it, I think in part idolatry that just makes us want to actually be able to be God. So um, the other problem with it, though, is, is that I, I can understand how Jesus might calm a storm, but I don't know how to deal with my own drama. Um, it, it's, it's this idea uh, that Jesus did do all things perfectly, 
but I am struggling with it. This sort of gets caught up in, so where can I find God helping now? And our conference might actually help with that. We're getting ready to do uh, HT conferences this summer, and the theme is for you. And it's, it's a really, really important thing because there's a difference between a gospel and a gospel for you, just like there's a difference between a cookie and a cookie for you. Um, if you can't actually have it, it doesn't help you. But then you start to realize the ways that he does it. And there's a little bit of more hope for us imperfect people. So I want to go to communion. Um, and I don't know, Paige, at, at your church, what they do for communion. Uh, but at my church, I think we just buy the cheapest wine we can get in bulk. Um, <laughs> it, 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 tastes, it tastes real bad. Um, and we, we have, they call it bread. Um, but it's, it's I, I mean, it, that's kind of a stretch. It's like some flour people dried in the sun. Uh, and <laughs> my pastor, he, he grabs it and he says, Jesus' words, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood. And it is. Like God actually manages to deliver the forgiveness of sins in his very body and blood through discount store wine and awful tasting cracker bread. Um, and if God can bring the forgiveness of sins through that, it shows the kind of means that he is capable of working with, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. Keep going. Because like... We, we actually had this um, conversation in my Doctrine 2 class, because I'm a theology major, and um, shout out to my professor. <laughs> like, we were talking about how you can't just use grape juice and Oreos. Like, you have to really know, like, this is the true body, this is the true blood. Like you said, for you, those are the operative working Christ-breathed words right there. And um, to take it and try and make it something else just kind of goes against what Christ has commanded and what it really does mean for us. Right. And, and the reason I want Oreos is because they taste better than bread. Uh, and the reason I want grape juice is because you don't have to worry about, well, what will I do sinfully with wine? Um, but in reality, God takes hold of something that we would say is not enough and gets everything done that he needs to. And, and that actually might be a really good thing to apply uh, to myself when I look in the mirror and I see all the reasons that I'm not enough. Um, I, I know that I was preached to the faith by a sinner who happened to be my pastor. I was raised um, to, to be the adult sort of functioning that I am by my parents who I know are sinners. Um, and, and as I get to, to raise my own kids, I'm terrified of all the things I'm messing up because I'm a sinner. But in all of it, the wheels have not fallen off this bus entirely because, well, God only uses imperfect things. Otherwise, what would he have to work with? 